Hi, this is Thomas with Believe in the Run. This is Robbie with Believe in the Run. And Robbie, what are we holding today? Today we're holding the Solomon S Lab Phantasm 2. Solomon isn't really known for road racing shoes. Yeah, I would say they're not really known for road shoes. They've gotten more into road over the last few years, I think with mixed success. They've always been known as like that trail brand that just knows what they're doing. Courtney DeWalters breaking every record in the universe in the shoes. They used to have Killian Jornet. They're trying to get into the premium racing world. They got an athlete like Noah Drotti. Last year, before we get into this, a little history of the shoe, this is the second version. So last year they came out with the Solomon S Lab Phantasm CF. And I tested this one. Yeah. Did you also test this I one? I didn't. I don't think okay. they had my size or something. So this was the CF carbon fiber. So it was kind of flat. It didn't feel like a race day shoe. While the upper was really light, the fit was, mm, I didn't really enjoy the fit that much. It wasn't super bouncy, kind of like your want from a race day shoe. It didn't have that it's not, it, race day it didn't belong in the same tier as all the other race day shoes. When we heard that we were gonna get this, uh, you know, updated racing shoe, I was like, uh, like didn't have super high hopes for it. And I gotta say, I'm, I was pretty surprised. When you said you were into it, I thought maybe Robbie's taking crazy pills. But this shoe's completely different. Why don't you just break it down from the start? Let's talk about the upper and okay. get going. We have this translucent style like rip stop mesh upper, pretty breathable, very light, has a little bit of reinforcement in the toe here. Lacing system is, I think, the highlight of the shoe, which I usually don't say for a race day shoe. I felt like it get, you get a really good lockdown from this, even though it looks like it's not. there's not much support here in the heel, there actually is plenty of support. The tongue is really nice because it's this stretchy bandex elastane material. So it really forms your foot. They have an, and there's like a nice pillow on top of the laces that kind of protects to the top of your foot. This might be my favorite upper of any, any race, race issue? issue. You know, it's interesting. We are seeing this kind of like mesh, this translucent mesh mm -hmm. going into a lot of the shoes that are concerned with weight. So they're dropping the weight they're putting. So it's gotta be pretty durable as far as strength for uh, keeping the shoe together. You talk about the laces here. You didn't experience any lace bite with these? With I that didn't, tongue no. being so thin? No, because that pillow on top protects it really nicely and you can get a great lockdown on it. And um, one of the problems that we had with the last shoe and pretty much any shoe that is in the top tier of race day shoes. It's the contents of the foam that really make a difference. So what do we got here? They're finally using p -backs. This is a full p -backs midsole. First I thought it was dual density because it does. It does feel it like the does. heel is softer down here. Right, it does. They said it's not, so I don't know, <laughs> gotta take their word for it. You can see the two layers, they're split, uh, and in between it is the carbon plate that's sandwiched in there. So it's a full length carbon fiber plate. You can see it a little bit in the cutout underneath here. You can see the way that it goes, which it sits pretty low in the shoe. On the run, I didn't feel like it was getting that propulsive toe off that you would want and maybe get from some other race day shoes. But the p backs and the landing and the roll through was really nice. I mean, it's a p backs mid, so it's gonna feel awesome. Like yeah. if it's done right. And it was, and I did feel like it was done right. Now, a lot of times they say that the plate closer to the foot provides more of that propulsive feel. It can sometimes feel harsh under your foot. Yeah, I kind of like the harsh feelings personally. If you don't like that, then you'll be plenty fine with the, the way that this feels. So I know you really like the Rocket X from Hoka, mm -hmm. the Rocket X 2. That's also gone to p backs now, and that one has the style and feel that you like. How would you compare these two shoes? At least Solomon says there's a rocker in the shoe. I didn't really feel, I mean, you can see that there's a little bit there, but I didn't really feel the rocker effect of this. Uh, neither did Ryan who reviewed this for us as well. Maybe it's there to some degree. I felt it, you didn't get quite the roll through that you're gonna get from shoes like the Hoka Rocket X2 or even the A6 Metaspeed Edge. I think because it forms nicely to the foot, and it is on that like, it's a very racer-like shoe. Like it looks like a racer, feels like a racer. You get a nice bounce off it. I almost would compare this, the ride of it, to like somewhere in the Vaporfly to like Metaspeed Sky range, like in between okay. those two. It doesn't have a soft feeling like the New Balance SC Elite or the Endorf or the Saucony Endorphin Pro 3. The one thing I didn't like about the shoe was the sizing as far as it ran. Even when I went a half size down, it's still there's still plenty of room in the toe box. I feel like it, it like they 
do a shoe at probably sample size nine, it seems like they make sure that it's sized right going up in sizes. But sometimes I feel like you have more difficulty with getting the I, right fit. I feel like it's like 50% of the shoes at this point. And I think that's changed in the last couple years since COVID. I don't know if there's, you know, changing factors. Quality control and yeah. stuff. I didn't feel like performance wise it affected it that much. Just maybe when it, I was like cornering or, you know, things like that, where you want a better fit in the toe box. Moving on to the outsole, it has that Conta Grip rubber on it, which is pretty grippy. It's found in a lot of their other shoes too. I think it's term in terms of grip on the road and especially in race day shoes it's definitely out there is one of the better one of the better grips one thing you didn't talk about so you've got rubber it's got that thin rubber mm -hmm. you like the grip on it you like the foam you're pretty happy with the lockdown it looks great except for being a little bit long the weight is always an issue with uh, race day shoes what does this one come in at for a men's size nine this is 7.4 ounces for a race day shoe it's right in there and um, then we know shoes are getting more expensive what's this yeah, one I coming mean, at that's the thing so this is a 275 dollar shoe so you're out you're at alpha fly prices still less than maybe the on cloud boom echo three but it's higher than pretty much most of the race day shoes out there around that are 250 dollars and i mean solomon on the trail you expect to pay a little more. It's more of a premium brand. One thing I don't think we mentioned, Robbie, was what the stack height was, because that right. also is important yes. in a race day. I forgot to throw that in there. Yeah, so this is actually doesn't go as high as the legal limit, which is interesting. 37 millimeters in the heel, 28 mill millimeters in the forefoot, uh, milliliters in the forefoot. Sorry. Milliliters, Sorry, all right. Sorry, I messed that up. And still pretty high stack, but I, I kind of like that it's a little bit lower for how thin of a platform. It's fairly stable because the the width in the forefoot is pretty pretty decent. It reminds me actually the design of the it reminds me of the Vaporfly a, a, a little bit with that thin heel but the, the wider, wider front wider base. forefoot. Yeah, I feel like if you are taking this to the marathon distance, it could be a little bit harsh. Not harsh, but you're not going to get that same comfort as some of the other shoes like the SC Lead or the Alpha Fly. That really matters to me in the later miles. So I get what you're saying. You're saying that maybe this wouldn't be your first choice for the marathon? Yeah, I just think it depends on the person. Like if you want that trade-off of like that faster feeling race day shoe that you still have that p -Vax bounce, then I think this is a good choice. But if you like more of that, that comfort, that softer feeling to like save your legs, um, you might want to go with a different shoe. So do you want to go for the light? Are we going for the rating here? Robbie, I can already guess where you're going with this, but just yeah. for the people. I'm going green. Green? Yeah, I've been, show <laughs> I've been throwing out the red this whole time, and now it's a, by the way, last thing, the design of the shoe, this is one of the prettier race day shoes out there. I mean, you're gonna get, I've got a I lot of- I will say I've seen some looks of some other shoes that are coming, and they all look kind of similar. But yeah, it's a. Yeah, I think it's, I think the shoe looks great. Honestly, I feel like the design is one of my favorites right now. I think some people some people thought it reminded them of the Rocket X2. Do you think the design does? No, I wouldn't say that. But I, I did see uh, there's a Saucony shoe that has this kind of like stripe coming down that some people were saying looks like a Nike swoosh. I saw that. A little bit. Yeah, yeah. So that's where I was saying it kind of has that look. I like it. I think they've always gone bold. They're S Lab Red is identifiable like this is there if there was a race team or a race car they would always have this red on it if you are buying this shoe and you google it don't look up phantasm 2 because and this is a problem i have with solomon i've never seen anybody who names a shoe the same name but just throws it's the, there's the solomon phantasm 2 which is a totally different thing than the s lab phantasm 2 so the s lab is like their performance um you know it's kind of like having the endorphin so if you had like go to Saucony and you have the endorphin line or the Audi zero or line. the Audi zero yeah. line from Adidas that's S lab for Solomon make sure you get the S lab phantasm 2 not the trainer phantasm 2 thanks for watching this video if you liked it please subscribe like the video leave a comment if you have any questions we'll do our best to answer it make sure you follow us on all our channels Instagram yeah, this is YouTube our email list in the description. Check out our podcast, The Drop and Fuel for the Soul. And before you ask in the comments, what shirt is Robbie wearing? Oh. It's Tracksmith. Yep. Track Fall Smith. 2023. Fall 2020. You know what I love about this? Mm -mm. I wasn't planning on saying this. Oh. It has side pockets. So it's like a jacket. It has side pockets. That's a jacket shirt. You can't even, can you see the side pockets? You can't see them. Oh, okay. But it has side pockets, people. Yeah. It's nice. Which is like a, like a little jacket. I'm actually a little hot right now. It's, so it's doing its job. Yeah. All right. If you were wearing that with those shoes, that lady on the street would have been like, Oh, oh yeah. Robbie. Yeah. Ladies yeah. be calling out. All right. No one's doing that. All right. Thanks for watching.
Or you could just look up the horror movie that has a little silver ball that flies through the air, forks you in the forehead, and then a drill comes out and sucks your brain. Ever, ever since you've talked about that movie, I've watched one a preview of it, and now the whole YouTube recommendation feed is just phantasm analysis of, which I need to watch because it looks incredible. <laughs> the, the Thin Man. <laughs> yeah. Check it out. Yeah.